All right, good afternoon everyone. My name is Benjamin and today I want to be looking at something because a lot of people are trying to compare 2020 to 2016 because, well, I'm going to admit it, I actually am getting some very serious 2016 vibes right now. So I decided to actually see if those feelings that I'm getting are actually justified. So I wanted to look at what 538 was saying in 2016. Now, at this point in time, let's find it. They were showing that, uh, 538 was showing that, uh, well, with the chance of winning, it was about 60-40 at this point in time. And if they, let's go to the 16th, they had Trump at a much higher electoral vote than they are currently forecasting. And they figured the popular vote would be actually reasonably close. Um, about what it wound up being. A little bit more in Clinton's favor, but, you know. Um, actually, their popular vote forecast was almost spot on. Uh, they underestimated Trump by about a percent. They, of course, significantly undersold Trump in the Electoral College and in the percent chance of winning. Though, that's not that far, by the way, from their current forecast, which let me uh, go to that one because it does actually matter. So, here we go. It's actually very, very similar. Give or take, you know, a, a little bit, right? But that said, at this point in time, like I said, it was 60-40. Now, let's go to what their national polling environment looked like at various points in time. And let's scroll back to, 26, to, to September 16th today, four years ago. And, well, they, polls had it as a very tight race on aggregate. Whereas this year, they don't. <laughs> I don't think that should be um, surprising, if we're honest. By the way, that's about 8%, 6%, 6.7, so almost 7 points. Okay, so let's look at the states where they were at this point in time. September 16th, Trump was heavily favored in Arizona. Colorado, September 16th. Here we go. Clinton was favored, which is to be expected September 16th. And you can hear my cat in the background. Uh, there we go go. They actually had Trump favored in Florida. In Georgia, Clinton never even came close unless he used an outcast. Um, on the 16th, uh, Trump was massively favored. Iowa, I believe on the 16th, yeah, Trump was actually massively favored. Um, in Maine, which Trump didn't win, on the 16th, uh, Clinton was massively favored, but less so than Biden currently is in Maine. Michigan, uh, if we go to the 16th, um, they had it similar to, they had it, uh, Clinton massively favored. Um, and of course they had Clinton massively favored the whole time there. Minnesota, very, very similar. Nevada, I think on the 16th they had Trump favored to win. Of course, or it was dead even, right? That said, Trump didn't win Nevada. He won Michigan. Uh, which one is that? New Hampshire? Yeah. Let's find the 16th. And the story is vaguely the same, actually. Trump was doing reasonably well in most of the battleground states, 
and winning the ones he needed to win to give himself a shot uh, up in North Carolina. Ohio, uh, 16th was almost as good as his actual chances. All right? Pennsylvania. Uh, let's find the 16th. Again, he never had it. All right? And I could go, I don't know why, oh yeah, Utah was kind of a thing because all of a sudden you had uh, McMullen. <laughs> yeah, 16th, where is it? There we go, yeah. Virginia, Utah isn't being watched as closely this year because, well, there is no third party candidate um, to take that one away. Uh, where are we going? 16, yeah never really factor in. He didn't win it. Um, there we go. September 16th in Wisconsin. September was actually very good for Trump four years ago. And we could go through. I'm using the polls plus. Um, but they decided to change that for this one and not do multiple iterations of their model. But Trump was ahead in all of these, except I don't think they split, uh, did the district. They might have, I don't remember. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's see. Maine, here we go, let's see. Did they, did they do the district? Ah, here we go. District 2. They actually did have Trump competitive in the second district. But they only had 14 polls of it, and most of them showed Trump winning or very close. And, of course, they did an adjustment, right? Now, they don't show the adjustment that they do for all of these. Um but they do the average adjusted polling margin. And this is in Florida, but point remains, right? So why am I getting major 2016 vibes? Well, we started to see polls start to tighten. And I know that's kind of a Oh, is that just noise? Or is that what's going on with that? Well, this is what my model is currently showing, by the way, which is a major, major win for Biden. I don't think this is going to happen, by the way. I'm not sure what is going to happen come time for the election. I really am not. And I'm not sure you're going to see a... A prediction for me until the day before election day. Uh, I'm not going to do another one of those. Um, uh, another uh, video where I try and actually say, well, this is what I think is going to happen come the election until the day before November 3rd. So until November 2nd. Because guess what? I'm going to put one out then just so I can say yes this is what my final prediction is but at the end of the day I don't really think anything I say now is going to be very useful because I've been saying this for a few weeks now cross tabs on the polls are all over the place if Trump is up with you know minority voters Hispanics and black voters why all of a sudden is he collapsing with white voters especially those with college degrees. Because I don't really... I, I can actually see him falling, faltering with voters, white voters with college degrees, 
But for him to be faltering with, you know, white working class, uh, more accurately, uh, white voters without a college degree, just really doesn't make sense considering the preferences of that group politically speaking. And considering the fact that they have no qualms about Trump calling it, you know, the Chinese. China virus or the Chinese origin coronavirus or whatever you want to call it, and I all of a sudden, even if this video would be demon, uh, would be you know monetized, is this would be demonetized just because I said that word. Um, they don't mind. They may not like Trump's personality. But I don't see anything with that group to indicate that they would turn on him, considering he's still roughly the same person they voted for four years ago. And Biden, he's not Clinton. He's not hateable like Clinton is. But he, in my opinion, has even less charisma, which is kind of impressive when you think about it. but just doesn't seem to be the Biden of 20 years ago or hell, even 12 years ago. He's more gaff prone than ever. I'm just, I'm just not seeing it. If I'm 100% honest, I, I don't understand what's going on with the polls because the crosstabs are not making sense with the top line results and the crosstabs are not making sense with themselves because if Trump is doing as well as he supposedly is with Hispanics I mean the average is showing him at about 35 or 36 based off of the math that I've been doing um Why is he not winning by even larger margins? Or at least being competitive in the popular vote like he would have been if he had been at that, those levels in 2016? That's a genuine question. Especially if he gets additional black support. I mean, he's polling at around 10 or 11% on average with the black voters which is the most that a Republican, which if that happens on election day, would be the most a Republican has ever, not ever, but most a Republican has gotten since Bush in 2004. Same thing with the Hispanic voters, by the way. And if he were to do that and lose maybe only 1% or 2% among the white voters, I'm not seeing where Biden wins in terms of the election as a whole. I'm just not seeing it. And yet the polls on average, when you take the top line results, are nationally showing Biden ahead by about 7% on average. Call me crazy, but I don't think it's reasonable this year for anyone to be trying for anybody to be calling the election right now we can use all the fancy models and statistics we want but I don't think anybody truly knows what's going to happen until it happens and I think this is the first time we can say that in a long time with regards to a presidential election 1960 maybe nineteen sixty eight and at the end of the day I think there's going to be a lot of people with some pretty big eggs on their face so I think covering this like a horse race is a bad idea. I don't think it's going to be a good thing uh, 
for the people who watch polls. I don't I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to be flat out honest. And the only thing that I can tell you for sure is that I think everybody is going to be in for a shock on election night. One way or the other, there's going to be a bit of a shock on election night. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, I, once again, thank you all for putting me over 500. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, likes, comments, subscriptions do help, especially if you're new to this channel. I greatly appreciate them, and I hope you all appreciate the honesty here. Um, so anyway, uh, that's it for today. Thank you all very much. Hope you enjoyed. See you all next time. Bye-bye.